everybody, it's me, Cody, on Microsoft, where today I'll be showing you Windows 10 Cloud Build 15025. Now, before I get in, note that a lot of what I'm going to be discussing here is pure speculation, as obviously there hasn't been any official documentation released for this particular version of Windows 10. I'm running this on a virtual machine as well, so pardon the subpar performance and visuals. Being so early on in development, there is not really much to see at this point in time. In fact, it's identical as far as the user interface is concerned. The biggest and perhaps only notable thing that you'll notice exploring this version of Windows is that it will not be able to run desktop applications. You'll be greeted by an error that RT users are familiar with, stating that the app is not designed to work on your version of Windows. This message even tends to pop up randomly, probably because of background tasks that start up only to be knocked over for being incompatible. Speculation points towards the idea that this version of Windows is the resurrection of the Windows RT concept. One of the key differences, however, with this is that Windows 10 Cloud is capable of running on both ARM-based devices and traditional x86 Intel-based devices. Basically, a lightweight version of Windows with reduced licensing fees for manufacturers. It's being thought that this version of Windows could be aimed at the lower-end market, for less expensive devices capable of simple tasks like web browsing or word processing. Windows 10 Cloud could be an interesting strategic move to promote the universal Windows platform and Windows Store. Obviously, because legacy applications won't be able to run on this version of Windows, apps would be primarily acquired through the Windows Store. Interestingly though, at least with this build of Windows 10 Cloud, the OS is not actually capable of running all store apps. Windows 8 apps and UWP apps and even Islandwood ported apps work just fine, uh, but desktop apps in the store ported through the Centennial Bridge won't open. Another idea being tossed around conspiracy land is the idea that Windows 10 Cloud could be aimed as a direct competitor to Chrome OS. While there isn't much to back this, I do see this as a feasible option for things like businesses or organizations, like K-12 school districts, for example. Alright, so keep in mind this bit here is going to be incredibly opinionative, so take it from my own perspective when evaluating my judgments. As far as the Windows 10 Cloud Chrome OS competitor speculation goes, this is an instance where it would make a little bit of sense to me. Here's a scenario. In the average K-12 school district with licensed Windows 10 machines, you'll have a cart of laptops wheeled into a classroom for the children to type their U.S. history research papers on. The school has a couple of these carts that are shared with all the people in the school, as no single laptop is assigned to a single student. The kids get into a single file line and take a laptop from the cart. They sign in using the network credentials provided by the district, and wait in 5 to 10 minutes for the laptop to sit on the preparing Windows screen to download the user profile and desktop from the district servers, only to be greeted with an error telling them that the device has run out of disk space from downloading the user profiles of every other kid that logged into the laptop in the past. The kid gives their laptop to the teacher to be re-imaged by the district IT department, and gets another laptop to repeat the cycle. This time, the laptop finally logs in, and the kid opens Google Chrome and logs into their Google Schools District Assigned Google Docs account to begin typing their research paper. Why not Microsoft Office? The school does have it licensed for all their devices and students. Well, none of the kids have Microsoft Office on their PCs at home, because it's a subscription their parents can't afford, and the kid isn't going to spend their time to enter the credentials provided by the school to install the 900 megabyte Office suite on their PC, only to realize they're going to have to deal with the poorly integrated OneDrive services just to get their documents onto whatever school laptop they're assigned randomly the next day. The laptops have now taken so long to do everything that the class is over and the kid needs to put the computer away. The kid can't figure out how to sign out because Microsoft has changed the location of the sign out button in practically every version of Windows since Windows XP, so the kid closes the lid without signing out to run outside to play jump rope or something. Right. Uh, as I've been witnessing more and more often, schools are starting to switch to buying or leasing cheap Chromebooks alongside Google for Education Services, uh, Google Docs, to evade these issues. The needs-to-be-connected cloud counter-argument doesn't really apply in this situation either, because these Chromebooks never leave the building which has reliable business class networking. For lightweight, simple tasks like word processing or web surfing in a classroom, believe me, Chromebooks handle these scenarios in a much more elegant way, offloading much of the work to the cloud with integrated Google services like Google Drive. 
Also, because the user and file system is controlled in the cloud, it makes it easy and fast to access your user account and files from any of the district's devices, which unlike the school's old system doesn't just include devices within their network, but any device connected to the internet, including that child's PC at home. Chromebook-like Windows 10 cloud devices compatible with existing domains and networking would make a lot of sense. They would have all the intuitive conveniences of Chromebooks, yet being familiar and compatible with the organization's existing technology. Anyhow, while some speculation seems to be revolving around this idea, in reality it probably won't be aimed in such a way. It's more likely, like I've said before, to be a sort of a new approach to Windows RT, a light version of Windows with reduced licensing fees that can run on both ARM and x86-based devices. Speculation aside, it's a really interesting development that I'm sure you'll be interested in hearing more about in the future. Make sure to check out onmicrosoft.com to continue receiving updates about the future of Windows 10 on ARM and Windows 10 Cloud. Thank you. Goodbye.